If you want to lift yourself up, lift up someone else. Booker T. Washington. Lead with value. What does that even mean? When you lead with value, you're essentially leading with the wants and needs of others before your own. How can that help you in your claims career? Let's talk about it, starting now. This is Adjuster TV. Hey, it's Matt here with Adjuster TV, and for the best tips and tools for getting on the first call list, as an independent adjuster, subscribe now. Click on the bell notification so that you never miss a video. Leading with value. You will find that there are a lot of benefits when you approach people and situations with the attitude of how you can serve instead of how you can be served. How? Primarily, it sets an example. As an independent adjuster, you may think that you're just out there on your own, plugging away at claims all day by yourself, but you're actually on a team. And if your managers see that you've got a much higher than usual customer service rating, they will reach out to you and want to know what you're doing so that they can help the other adjusters. Adjusters who are on your team and or not your competitors get their numbers up. Leading with value like this can also help you reverse stereotypes. There is a widespread belief that insurance companies are tight-fisted and will try to screw over the insured at every turn and that they're trying to drag their feet on the claims process. It's not cool, but this stereotype is real. Is it deserved? I don't think so. There are a lot of laws that govern our industry and fraud detection and prevention on either the insured side or the carrier side is a really big deal. People are watching. Companies that don't play by the rules don't last long. Also, there's no adjuster alive who wants to drag a claim out any longer than it needs to be, but I digress. If you show up to an insurance house and you're sincerely trying to find a way to extend coverage within the constraints of the policy and the carrier estimating guidelines, and you are always communicating to the insured where they are in the claims process, you just broke the stereotype. Because of this, it creates an expectation that you can be counted on. You're serving the insured before you're serving the carrier or yourself, and that will show. And there's this weird effect of reciprocity. If your IA manager calls you and says, hey, I've got one out in the twigs and it's probably not covered. I've asked three other people and they didn't want it. Uh, can you help me and go look at this claim? You say, yes, absolutely, I'll take care of it. And smile when you say this. You might think that if you do this a lot, you'll end up being the chump that always gets the garbage claims, and you may just be the first person they call when they have a problem. But the thing is this, you're also gonna be the first person they think of when they've got something special. Like for example, three inch hail hits a little town with 5,000 people in it, they're only sending four adjusters. They may think, man, Matt really helped me out on some uncool assignments. And trust me, they know because your managers have all likely been adjusters, which assignments are not cool. Matt has really helped me out. Let's see if we can get him on this storm. I'm gonna tell you right now, that little storm is gonna be the absolute best place to spend the summer. Or they've got 55 commercial hail claims in Fargo. It's one insured with a bunch of apartment buildings. Happens all the time and it's reciprocity. Lead with values and others will want to give value back to you. It's human nature. So how does this look on a practical level? It can help you when you're applying for jobs at IA firms. Always lead with how you can help a company. Never lead with, this job will help me get out of a bad situation or I've got a lot of debt and I really need this job or I didn't save anything for retirement and I'm 58 and I need to make up and I need to make 120 a year or I'm hooped. Lead with value. You say, I'm ready to help your team close high quality claims quickly and help the carrier take care of their customers. One sentence. You can do this with your manager, as I mentioned a minute ago. Always lead with a positive, upbeat yes anytime your manager asks if you can do something. You can do this with the carrier. Lead with the best file that you can. Think of the people downstream from you who will be touching the file and you will find that a lot of your questions about how many pictures should I take or should I use spell checker or Grammarly, Grammarly when writing my reports? These questions will start to answer themselves. You can lead value with your insureds. One of the best ways to lead with a value with an insured is to always go into an interaction with the insured with an open mind and a positive attitude. Sometimes you've got doubts about whether something is covered or if the house is in a neighborhood that probably didn't get hit by the storm, but never assume that you've got all the facts before you get to the property because you may not. Always give the insured the benefit of an open-minded investigation. You owe it to them to not have your mind made up before you get to their house. I can't tell you the number of customer service surveys I've personally received on claims that I had to deny that said, we were disappointed that our insurance company couldn't help us with our claim, but we feel the adjuster gave us a fair shake. It's your job. You know that I love contractors and they are no exception to leading with value. And this one actually is pretty easy. Yes, I know that you've butted heads with aggressive roofers and PAs, we all have, but don't let those rare experiences affect every interaction that you have with a contractor. The way to lead with value 
with a contractor is like this. Smile and be friendly when you meet them in the front yard. Instead of making the assumption in your mind that every roofer is a crook, maybe assume that this guy or girl in front of you is just trying to feed their family in the best way that they know how. Then stand shoulder to shoulder with this person and say, all right, let's take a look at this one and see what we can do to help Mrs. Insured. Doing this will take this from a confrontational, the roofer's trying to make money and the adjuster's trying to save money situation to a, the adjuster's here to help the homeowner and their representative the roofer, assess if there is damage, and then work with them to make sure that the settlement is reasonable, fair, and follows the policy and carrier estimating guidelines. Because that's your job, no matter who's present at the inspection. You can lead with value with the insurance agents. Many carriers sell policies through agents. Those agents might be independent salespeople who sell for a lot of carriers, or they might be working directly for a carrier as part of their sales division like a state farm agent. He's not also selling all state policies and he's probably wearing a red golf shirt. When you go on CAT, your IA firm may require you to go and do agent visits. But I'm gonna tell you that even if they don't, take some time the first couple of weeks to go and visit the salespeople in the area where you're working. And you can usually see the agent's contact info on the FNOL. You can go and just pop in unannounced, but often the agent will be in a meeting or out playing golf. So I will recommend that you make an appointment to meet the agent for 10 or 15 minutes, max. So what are you gonna do in this meeting? Three basic, three basic things. Number one, you're gonna introduce yourself and put your face to your name. Usually agents are very interested in how claims turn out because it's usually during claims where insurers will decide to switch carriers if they don't like how they're treated on their claim. And agents earn their money on premiums that their policyholders pay, right? So agents will likely be calling to follow up with insurers who have claims. Also, insurers will be calling in to either praise or complain about the claims process. Your name is on the file for better or for worse. And if you spent some time with the agent and a customer calls in to say that you were a mean jerk, the agent might think to themselves, mean jerk? I thought Matt was uh, pretty friendly and nice. Hmm, I wonder what else is going on here. You're not automatically gonna get thrown under the bus. Number two, you wanna answer any questions that they may have about the claims process, what hail damage is, how bad is the damage you've been seeing, etc. And number three, leave your contact information. I will always tell agents that they can reach out to me via phone or email anytime if they think of other questions. Also, I will tell them that if an insured calls in and is trying to contact me, to give them my cell phone number. And if they can, reach out to me as well. Often the number in a file will be incorrect or I'm playing phone tag with an insured. Sometimes the insured will go into their agent's office and be like, can't get a hold of my adjuster, Matt. Oh, Matt Allen? He was just in here and he gave me his card. Let's call him. Because as I've said before, every single claim that's assigned to you represents a paycheck, okay? Do not ever close a claim for no contact until you've absolutely exhausted every possible way you can think of to contact that insured. If I'm a homeowner and I file a claim and I don't hear from an adjuster and then two weeks later I get a letter in the mail saying my claim is closed, I'm gonna be mad. And then I'm gonna call my agent and make a stink, right? So this affects not only your paycheck, but potentially the agent's paycheck as well. Always lead with value whenever and wherever you can. You'll find that your metrics are higher and that you get more work. Why? because instead of always looking out for yourself first, you make yourself invaluable and indispensable by always having a posture of serving others before yourself. You may have also heard of this as the golden rule. Question of the day. Storm season starts here in just a few short weeks. Have you gotten the right licenses to work spring and summer hail? Check out this video for the first five licenses you should get as a field property adjuster and why. And for much more information about crushing it as an independent adjuster, head on over to adjustertv.com. If you got value from this video, you can help me create more videos just like this by subscribing to Adjuster TV on YouTube. Wondering what to watch next? There are tons more videos right here on the Adjuster TV YouTube channel. And as always, thank you so much for watching and have a great storm.